With California on the verge of reopening, more people could soon be back to work at the office. The push to help as many parents as possible with child care. Accusations of sex assault inside a Southern California psychiatric hospital. What one alleged victim's attorney points to as the bigger problem. And the positively San Diego commencement ceremony as one local family celebrates three generations of graduates from the same school. ABC 10 News starts now with breaking news. But first, a water main break is causing serious problems in the Torrey Highlands area. Roads closed and reports of low water pressure in surrounding neighborhoods. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. Our ABC 10 News reporter Rena Nakano is live on El Camino Real with a look at what's happening right now. Rena. Hey, Kim and Steve. Yeah, we're here on the 1100 block, 11,000 block of El Camino Real. And as you can see, this is pretty muddy situation. So right behind me, you're going to see a big hole. And right there, all of that mud is caused by a big water main break. If you pan over to the right here, you can see a construction worker in front of this truck there. Right under there is where it all happened. We're told SDPD has this northbound side of El Camino closed off to traffic. Instead, they opened a little bit of the southbound side. So one lane of cars are going northbound. The right two are going southbound. So that is the update that just happened within the last two minutes or so. Now, if you're familiar with this area, this is right by Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Crews have been here since before four o'clock, and they actually told me that this all happened because a plastic pipe burst right underground. They do not know the cause, but they did say it is a big project, so they will be out here all night. Uh, we actually saw some crews bringing in those cam lights for overnight work, so not going to have any traffic on the northbound side any time, especially with all this mud. Reporting live out here in Torrey Highlands, I'm Rena Nakano. I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Rena. And we have breaking news from Riverside, where a brush fire is burning in the Wairupa Valley. Here is what we know so far. It is quickly grown from three acres, at least 100 acres now, forcing mandatory evacuations. Firefighters say it could grow to up to 1,000 acres. We will bring you more information as it comes into us. We have about three weeks until California almost fully reopens, and that could mean returning to work at the office. For many San Diegans who have been home for the last year. That also means trying to figure out child care. Our ABC 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty explains today's push for the city is to provide parents with some support as they work to rebound. Working mom Shelby Gomez has been shuffling to find child care for her two children. It's so hard when you don't have the child care that meets your needs. She works at the YMCA. Her job is to help families find child care, but she found herself in a bind, even having to move. During COVID, we moved in with my husband's mother in Vista. So we live in San Diego, so um, a bit of a trek to move in with uh, grandma, but it was, it was wonderful that we had that support system. But so many don't have that family support. There was a child care crisis in San Diego County before the pandemic. There was only enough licensed child care facilities to serve 45% of the demand. During COVID, 522 child care facilities were shuttered, a 20% loss in the county. According to the California Budget and Policy Center, three in 10 child care jobs were lost during the pandemic. Today, City Councilman Raul Campillo called on the city to launch a search for space where San Diego could provide more child care services, he says, at an affordable price. We urgently need more child care and we need child care facilities and resources for children here in the city of San Diego. And unfortunately, recent trends indicate that the city is becoming less family friendly. Filling a need that Campillo says can no longer be ignored, one Shelby knows all too well. I've been on so many phone calls with friends who are just crying, you know, telling me, I don't know if I can take it any longer. I don't know what to do, but this is just too hard. Vanessa Van Hefty, ABC 10 News. Campillo has asked the city to identify available space for child care facilities and have a report ready for review here in the next six months. You can find child care resources and other tools on our website at 10news.com. Just click on the rebound. 
County Supervisor Jim Desmond is proposing an idea to help bring customers back to restaurants once California reopens. And he's calling the program Dine Out and Help Out for San Diego County. Desmond wants to set aside $50 million in federal money for the program. Restaurants can sign up and then offer customers 50% off of their meal or up to $10 per person for a party of five. If you go out to a restaurant on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, party of five, you could get up to $50 off of your bill. And then the participating restaurants would submit that discounted coupon or they, they would submit that to the county then for the reimbursement of those dollars. Desmond wants the board to vote on this June 8th, and if approved, it would start June 15th, the day California reopens. San Diego County just reported its lowest number of new COVID cases since the first weeks of the pandemic. There were only 25 new cases today, and that's less than half a percent of all the tests that were given yesterday. The county did not report any new deaths today. In fact, Instead, it removed two previously recorded deaths. It did not elaborate as to why. Tonight, accusations of sexual assault inside a Southern California psychiatric hospital. Our ABC tenders uh, spoke to a North County mother who says that she was abused by another patient after being admitted for severe postpartum depression. She told our investigative reporter Jennifer Kastner the bigger problem is having co-ed mental hospitals. The woman we spoke to is a new mom with no history of psychosis. Her grief now so overwhelming, she struggled to finish the interview. She was medicated. She was hallucinating. She was suffering from severe postpartum depression. San Diego attorney Jessica Pride is representing the woman you're seeing in silhouette, who's going by the name Emma. We've been asked to not show her face, and she says that she was the victim of sexual assault. I said no. I told the guy, no. She lives in North County and was visiting family in San Bernardino County when she says she experienced a single psychotic breakdown and was taken by ambulance to Canyon Ridge Hospital in Chino, where she was placed on a mandatory mental health hold. Its website shows it's a 157-bed acute locked psychiatric facility. The hospital has denied the accusations you'll hear in this story and extends its sympathy for the patient's situation. Emma's condition was so severe that she actually needed to stay at Canyon Ridge for about 10 days. Pride said that because Emma would undress in front of other patients and enter their rooms, she was deemed a sexual risk alert. That means every moment of every day, they should have known where Emma was. I was supposed to be watched 24 seven and they lost track of me. Pride provided us a copy of what she said is the hospital's procedures for a patient placed on sexual risk alert. Part of the document reads, a patient will remain in common areas while awake. There must be staff awareness of patient location at all times. And nursing staff should be aware of room placement and try to keep patients with sexual risk separated as much as possible. While in a state of psychosis, Emma said twice she wandered into a male patient's room on her same floor, where she said she was assaulted. She didn't fully comprehend what was happening to her, uh, but she did have the wherewithal at one point to say no. We were in the shower and they didn't check there. The man who, who did this to her does recall her saying no. Uh, but he was also sick. Pride said Emma told her husband who called the police, but Emma was too medicated to file a report. She filed one after she was released. Chino police denied us access to that report, citing investigatory privilege, but Pride provided a redacted copy where the officer took down what she could remember, adding, during these sexual acts, she did not find it pleasurable and felt disgusted after the fact. The case was referred to the San Bernardino County District Attorney's Office, where a spokesperson confirmed that prosecutors didn't pursue the case because of a lack of sufficient evidence. Emma is now suing the hospital and parent company, Universal Health Services of Delaware, in part for negligence and violating the Dependent Adult Civil Protection Act of California, and she's seeking financial damages. Pride said, aside from the suit, she's also requested that the hospital make changes to policy. It was Kane and Ridge's job to watch them. I felt like I wasn't protected. They never should have been allowed to be in the same room together alone.
let alone to have sex. Court filings from the hospital show the defendant denies generally each and every allegation. The hospital denied an interview request, but sent a statement outlining that due to patient privacy laws and pending litigation, it cannot comment on the care and treatment provided. However, when the evidence is presented in this matter, it will demonstrate the events stated within plaintiff's complaint are not an accurate reflection of the facts and that Canyon Ridge Hospital provided appropriate care and treatment. We don't even have co-ed jails. So why do we have co-ed psychiatric facilities, especially with patients who are vulnerable and medicated. The California Department of Public Health confirmed in part to ABC 10 News that there are no specific gender segregation laws. I think the most important thing to stress is how vulnerable this population is and that they might be being discredited. Camille Cooper is with the Rape, Abuse and Incest National Network known as RAIN. You need to separate by gender. It's not going to solve um, physicians or other healthcare workers. Um, committing sexual assault, um, but, it, but it would mit mitigate the issue of patient on patient. The hospital would not comment on gender segregation at its facility. I think that psychiatric facilities in California, as well as across the country, need to be segregated. Pride said her client now suffers from anxiety and depression related to what happened at the hospital. To read the full statement provided by the hospital, go to 10news.com and find it under this story. Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News. As restaurants rebound from the pandemic, some are worried that a proposed ban on certain containers in Vista is coming too soon. Our partners at KPBS report that some restaurant owners say switching from plastic and styrofoam containers to something more expensive could be just one cost too many right now. In response, one city council member has proposed offering some restaurants a waiver as they recover from the pandemic. I think it's important that we have a strong marriage of uh, environmentally conscious policies and real effort to reduce uh, post-consumer waste, while at the same time, we don't level large unintended taxes on small business people. The city council has directed staff to develop a hardship policy to explore this issue. 